in modern machine learning we work with data sets that can have dozens hundreds or even thousands of features too many features may sound useful but they often create problems this is called cause of dimensionality when dimensions increase data points become sparse and hard to compare models start warping because they learn noise instead of real patterns and visualizing data becomes almost impossible that is where dimensionality reduction helps it transfer high dimensional data into a lower dimensional space while keeping the original structure as much as possible in simple words dimensionality reduction helps us simplify complex data while keeping its essence It's not just about picking data easier to visualize. It actually improves model performance and helps us interpret data better. Imagine you have a data set with 500 different features describing customer behavior. After applying dimensionality reduction, we might discover that most of the variance comes from just a few hidden factors like spending patterns, brand loyalty, or discount sensitivity. Dimensionality reduction also gives us several important benefits it makes competition faster so our models train and run more efficiently it reduces overfitting by removing unnecessary or noisy features it also improves visualization by allowing us to see patterns in 2d or 3d space and finally it enhances interpretability making it easier to understand which factors truly drive outcomes. Overall, dimensionality reduction help us simplify data while improving both performance and clarity. Now let us look at principal component analysis or PCA. PCA is one of the most popular techniques for dimensionality reduction. It works by finding directions in the data called principal components where the data varies most. These directions help us capture the maximum amount of information using fewer dimensions. Each principal component is basically a new feature made by combining the original features in a smart way. The first component captures the most variance and the second one captures the next highest and so on. In simple words, PCA finds the best directions that explain the most variation in the data, making it easier to analyze and visualize complex data sets. Let us understand how PCA actually works step by step. Step 1. We start by standardizing the data. This means we normalize all features so they have a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. Step 2. Next, we compute the covariance matrix. This helps us understand how different features are re related to each other. Then we calculate eigenvectors and the eigenvalues. Eigenvectors show the directions where the data varies the most and eigenvalues tells us how much variance each direction captures. Step 4. After that, we sort the component by the eigenvalues in descending order. So, the most important components come first. Step 5. We then select top k components usually the ones that explain most of the variance such as 95 percent is the step six finally we project data onto these new components to get the reduced dimension data set this is how pca reduces complexity while keeping the most important information from the data Let us see 
how PCA works in real life. Imagine your data set has 100 features. After applying PCA, you might find that only 5 components explain around 95% of the total variance. This means you can represent each data point using just 5 numbers instead of 100 without losing much important information. PCA also helps us visualize the data when we reduce the data to two principal components we can often see clear clusters or patterns in a simple 2d scatter plot but pca does have a few limitations first pc is a linear method so it can't capture complex non-linear relationships in the data second the principal components are combination of original features which means they are sometimes hard to interpret directly. Even with these limitations, PC remains one of the most powerful and widely used dimensionality reduction techniques in machine learning. Let us talk about TSNI. TSNI is a non-linear dimensional reduction technique mainly used for visualizing high dimensional data in 2D or 3D. The key idea is that TSNI focus on preserving local structure. This means that if two data points were close to each other in the original high dimensional space, TSNI tries to keep them close even after reducing the dimensions. Here is the core intuition. TSNI keeps similar points together and pushes dissimilar points for the report. This naturally forms clusters that humans can easily understand and interpret. So, when you see a Disney plot, you are basically looking at a compressed, non-linear view of your data where similar things stay close and patterns become visually clear. Let us understand how Disney works. Disney follows a three-step process. Step one, compute similarities. It calculates how similar each pair of data points is in the high dimensional space using probability distributions. Step two, create a map. It builds a similar probability map in the low dimensional space. Step three, optimize position. It then moves the points around to make sure low dimensional relationships match the high dimensional ones as closely as possible and this is done using gradient descent here is an example when a tsni is applied to minced handwriting digits it naturally forms 10 distinct clusters one for each digit without even being told what the digits are this shows how well tsni captures local structure tsni has great advantages it is excellent for visualizing high dimensional data and it can capture complex non-linear patterns but it also has limitation it is computationally heavy for large data sets it is not ideal for feature extraction and the results vary between runs because of random initialization Now let us take a look at UMAP. UMAP is a modern non-linear dimensional reduction algorithm inspired by topology and manifold theory. It is designed to preserve both local and global structures in the data, making it useful for both visualization and downstream machine learning task. UMAP works in three main steps. Step one, build a neighborhood graph it creates a graph that represents how points are connected or related to each other in the high dimensional space. Step 2. Project to lower dimensionals. UMAP then maps this graph into lower dimensional space, usually 2D or 3D, while trying to preserve the original relationships and distances between points. Step 3. Optimize structure. Finally, it uses stochastic optimization 
to make sure the lower dimensional structure stays as close as possible to the higher dimensional structure. UMAP offers several advantages. It is faster than Disney and works well with large data sets. It preserves both local and global structure, gives consistent and reproducible results and can be used not only for visualization but also as a pre-processing step for machine learning models. However, UMAP has also some limitations because it is a non-linear method. Its results are sometimes harder to interpret compared to PC and it requires tuning of hyperparameters like number of NIPOs and minimum distances to get the best results. Here is a quick comparison of PCA, TC and UMAP. PCA is a linear method that focuses on global variance. It is very fast and easy to interpret, making it great for pre-processing and future extraction. TSNI is a non-linear and focuses on local neighborhoods. It is mainly used for visualization because it creates clear 2D or 3D clusters, but it is slow and less interpretable. UMAP is also non-linear but preserves both local and global structure. It is faster than TSNI, more stable and works well for visualization as well as embedding. Each method has its strength, so the right choice depends on your data and your code. Dimensionality reduction is used across many industries to make sense of complex data. In marketing, it helps identify customer segments for targeted campaigns. In genomics, TSNI and UMAP reveal patterns in gene expression. In NLP, they help visualize world relationships. In finance, PCA reduces market factors for better investment decisions. In cybersecurity, UMAP highlights unusual patterns that might indicate threats. And in image processing, PCA helps with feature extraction while keeping important visual details. Three dimensional reduction technique depends on your code. Use PCA when you want to understand variance, relationship between features, or when you need clear pre processing before supervised learning. Use TSNI when your main goal is to visualize high dimensional data and uncover hidden clusters. And choose UMAP when you need fast, high quality visualization that can scale to large data sets while preserving both local and global structure. Here are the key takeaways. Dimensional data helps simplify data while still keeping the important structure. PCA is linear, fast, and easy to interpret, great for pre processing and understanding feature contributions. TSNI is powerful for visualization, revealing hidden clusters in complex data. UMAP offers both speed and structure preservation, making it ideal for large data sets. Together, these methods help us see and understand patterns in data that would otherwise be too complex to interpret.